I'm Kaleem Aftab. I'm director of international programming at the Red Sea International Film Festival. When we do the international program, our main priority is Asian and African films. So first of all, I look at what films would go into the competition on the Asian and African side, and we select those and we try and get a really great competition that is a breadth of Asian and African films, which is really hard because in the end, we only choose seven of those titles. Then from there, I kind of have a little bit of an idea of what will spread out to the other programs. And w as with every program, you're, you're governed by what's out there. And this year, I did notice that because of every all the rhetoric on Pose Me Too, Black Lives Matter, that there was quite a few really good films, especially from Europe and Canada, that were done by second generation or filmmakers from other countries who would come into European films. So I would kind of lean towards selecting those films because usually they have a sensibility that appeals to the Arabic audience. I mean, I really like new voices every year. Um, and so for me, in addition to the usual suspects, the Adil and Bilal and Fatih Akins, what I was really did enjoy seeing uh, Cedric Edo's film, The Gravity, that was great. Uh, Zane from Kurdwin Ayub, who is a phenomenal filmmaker. I really enjoyed watching those films, really appealed to me as my memories of being a Muslim growing up in London were reflected in this film, which was Young Girls in Austria. So I really liked that. I liked uh, uh, Rice Boy Sleeps from Canada, which was a Korean story. Then this year we had so many fantastic South Korean products. It was amazing. Um, across the board, even in the main gala sections, they were great. So it was a wide breadth. And then obviously with the competition, it's like all my children, so I love all of them. I always feel like I want to take risks with the programming and we always take some risks. I think this year, from what we saw last year was uh, You Resemble Me, a film by Dina Amo won the Audience Award, which was a film that perhaps didn't play so well in the West, but played really well in the Arab world because of the sensibilities to it. Um, so I would look for those type of films that would be cultural bridges between East and West, between South and North as well, not forgetting Africa. Then when I looked at the African films, I was very conscious of, are they African films made by African filmmakers with African finance or not? I tried to lean towards those to give a different perspective. So we're not always seeing the usual Western perspective on cinema because of the dominance of the first 100 years. I think what's really interesting is we've got a film from Angola, which is Our Lady of the Chinese Shop, and we also have a film, Shimoni, which is uh, from Kenya. And because we're seeing African filmmakers tell these stories, the sensibility is of transitional change. We're seeing films about the Chinese influence, but done in different ways. It's very much about Africans trying to find ways of taking powers for themselves. And I think that's a good trend that will continue. I think over the last 20 years, Arab films has developed so much from when other film festivals began at the change of the millennium to today. If you look at the quality, breadth, quantity of Arab films, it's been completely transformed. Uh, I think it makes that a harder selection now because, but because of the breadth of the quality. But what you then see is we're a great festival. You have other festivals in the Arab world which are also great because of it, because of the choices that are available. And I think what you really then see to answer your question is the Arab world is taking control of its own films. And by taking control of its own films, the narrative of the film changes. So we're now seeing more Arabic cities, places we've never heard of, are appearing in movies, characters that are beyond the Bedouin type or the Berber type. Now we're seeing modern day Arab Arabia reflected in the films. I think sustainability is the key to our festival. It's not just showing movies. We have a fund, we have labs, we have different areas, a souk, a project market. We're looking at not just today's program, we're already consciously thinking about next year's program. How, not just that Arabic films, but also African films, how we can help them develop and improve. 
And from the standpoint of, yes, I know that there's been other attempts and that they've fallen by the wayside in the Middle East of film festivals, but that's just because Arab, for the Arab world, cinema is new. Uh, it wasn't that these festivals were particularly bad. It was just they were trying to change the game maybe a little bit too early. Right now, the difference in Saudi Arabia is obviously the size of the market. When you have a market of 35 million people with the wealth that the Saudi population has and the GDP, there's an opportunity not just for local filmmakers to put their films into cinemas, but there's also an opportunity for not just American films, but Indian films are popular here, Egyptian films are popular here, we're going to try and make a drive to get Nollywood films more popular here. And because of the geographical placing of Arabia, Saudi Arabia, we feel that we're in a great place to be the bridge for all cinemas, as well as a new Saudi cinema that will grow and develop. To be honest, we got pretty much everything we wanted to get this year. I, don't, I think from last year to this year, we see much more interest from the studios, we're now saying more interest from South Korea because of there's no coronavirus this year. People find it easier to travel. More people want to come. It's a very exciting festival in that regards. More people want to discover. And so there's a great feeling of energy here. And I think the way we see the festival developing is that we become the major festival of the region, but a festival that everybody wants to come to. Uh, that's part of the map and part of the talks about festivals. My name is Antoine Khalife. I am the head of the Arab program and the film classic in uh, the Red Sea Film Festival, the Red Sea International Film Festival. I am so excited because it is a second year and we uh, enjoyed last year. So we decided to continue in a program that we really want to do, like in terms of selection of films. I'm the head of the Arab program. So in terms of selection of Arab creative different films, I'm so excited and so excited to see how the public here, the local audience, will receive these films that we choose. We have big lineup. We have uh, films from different Arab countries. We have uh, classic films. So we are very excited to see if they, if we can share these films that we like, that we enjoyed, if we can share them with the local public, with the local audience. So we are very excited for that, really. Here the people, they uh, we, we have like uh, a lot of films coming from North Africa, for example. We have a film called Last Queen. It's a historic, it's a historic film. We have a lot of films coming from Morocco, like a Queens, which will be shown tomorrow in a gala. So the films are really, the subjects are different. A lot of films made by women filmmakers like uh, Adila Ben Bimirad or like Yasmin Bikiran, talking about a lot of issue about uh, it's really very exciting. So uh, a lot of films coming from North Africa, a lot of them, a lot of uh, films from Palestine, from Lebanon. So it's exciting in terms of subject. And uh, what I would like to highlight is we have a lot of films uh, realized here in Saudi, we have seven sh feature films, seven feature Saudi films, exciting, a lot of them, that there is something different taking place here with uh, in matter of subject and in matter of how they deal with actors. In the beginning, they used to be very hurry. They wanted to do the films without uh, without focusing on the script. And so why we had the films that not very, but not very completed in terms of of uh, of script in terms of uh, cinematography and i believe this like last year it changed a lot now the people they know that they need to concentrate on the script before shooting the film so they've been very hairy but they understand that they cannot be hairy they need time to work on a script, to have the the right team, the crew, in terms of uh, DOPs, music composer, uh, sound engineer. So I believe now they are taking their time. They spend more time on the script. And this is good because the result is relevant. So why we have, like this year, two films in competition, uh, Within Sand and another film called The Raven Song. And we can feel the scripts are much better and especially how do they work now with the actors. They really take their time to work on the characters in the films. They, they understand that they cannot be hurry, hurry, hurry to do the film. They need time. And at first, they didn't, uh, they didn't think about it. They really wanted to have a script and to do it. So why the films were 
not 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 strong as it could be, but now we feel that uh, they understand this point. And more and more films are talking about identity. It's a very uh, very now now we we feel that uh, it's not a genre of thriller. In, in the region, it's not very now. It's not uh, a la mode. If I not not thrill, it's not a la mode. But a lot of films are talking about the identity, about the crisis that we have, like uh, in a film like Dirty, Difficult, Dangerous, a Lebanese film is talking about refugee, a Syrian refugee that in love with a with the Ethiopian mad in Lebanon. So I believe they're talking about what's going on in the world in terms of identity, in terms of uh, problem. Uh, dealing with uh, with uh, daily problem uh, created by the refugee, created by what what we feel. This is this is a theme that a lot of films are a lot of them they, they they're talking about this a lot. A lot of them are talking about this. A lot of them are talking about sexuality and intimacy. I believe that all these films that we've been dealing it's uh, related to the social problems. Uh, in the Middle East, identity, sexuality, all of them. If I if I give you example, you see the Blue Captain, the Moroccan film. Uh, if you see Harka, the Tunisian film. If you see Dirty Difficult, they all talking about identity crisis in the social and sexuality, frustration, and they can express uh, through these films so their their obsession, and I believe the best film is when you express your obsession in films. This is the best film for me. When the director, he is able to express what he feels, his obsession, his, what he's worried about. He put it in the cinema, and this is the best film for me. The last year, I was very worried about the women reaction in, in for, for some films. I, uh, I program a film called Sula, it's an Algerian film about a woman, Algerian woman, that she has a baby, she's not married, and uh, she, 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 she suffer. And I was very, very worried about the reaction, especially the woman here. And the people here, the audience, they love the actress. And the, the actress, she, she, she plays her own role. They come, they protect her. They, they, they had an amazing, amazing uh, conversation with her. So <clears throat> what I learned is that we need to respect the people here and we don't need to be afraid of this. So why I, I felt much more free this year in terms of programming, because I knew that the, the, the audience he would he would appreciate the films that I've been afraid to to uh, to to program. I've been very relieved about the reactions that we had last year from a lot of films that we've been very very about it, and uh, there was no reason to be afraid. In fact, so why uh, so what I learned is that uh, I can be much more free in terms of uh, programming films.